The next thing I'm going to do is pull the steering column. Um, you have to at least disconnect it at the steering box or pull it out. I figure there's less the chance of me damaging something, putting it on or off. If I just take the shaft out, it's not supposed to be that hard. So back behind the brake booster here. There is an attachment. It's a little cotter pin right here uh, that attaches the cable that prevents you from taking the key out of the ignition with it in either um, no, without it in park actually. It's got to be in park to take the key out. Uh, so that shaft needs to be disconnected. Then down at the steering box where the rag joint is, um, I'm going to disconnect that and we'll see how it goes, but I'm thinking of actually disconnecting it, it in all three places. There's a pinch joint over here that goes on to the steering box. There's also a pinch joint over here that goes into the steering shaft, and then there's the rag joint itself. I'm thinking about disconnecting all of those so that when I actually pull the steering column, Whichever one of those pieces is easiest to separate will separate and it will give me less problems pulling it out. It's only four bolts total, so I think that's where I'm, what I'm going to do. Okay, a very long extension is your friend when trying to get these pinch bolts off. Uh, this looks like one of those where I'm going to have to work it both ways because there's a little bit of rust on it. Point is, you don't want to force these things and snap them off, and then you have real problems. Uh, important thing to remember here: there's a indentation in that shaft, and the pinch bolt actually goes through it, so you can't just loosen this. It's got to come all the way out, otherwise it will still be connected there. Uh, socket has to be the 7 sixteenths, and it has to be 12 point, because uh, that's how the nut is actually, or the bolt top is actually made. If you can see it very well, but it will not work with just a six point socket. You need to have the 12 point. Uh, right now, I'm going to go move the steering wheel to get the other one up on the top and then take it off. That was the bottom one. So, there we have the steering coupler or rag joint, as most people call it. Uh, all the nuts are off, and it should come apart in one of those three places whenever I try to pull the steering column out. Now, uh, this bolt here on the rag joint, there's two of them, one on each side. It takes a half inch wrench on this side and I was able to get a half inch, I'm sorry, a 9 sixteenths socket on this side. Uh, they are both six point, so you can use any kind of socket you have. Uh, it appears that this bolt is actually permanently attached to the steering coupler, but it is useful to have uh, two wrenches there because it prevents it from rotating like that if you were to only use one on that side. So that's off. Uh, I'm going to disconnect the cotter pin on the cable down here and we will be good to go. We'll be able to go inside and disconnect the uh, steering column and pull it out. Okay, getting the steering column out I think is going to be an exercise in braille. 
because I don't think you're going to be able to see it and watch what you're doing at the same time. There appears to be a bolt one there uh, on the left side of it, and I can't even get the camera over there to, to show the right side, but I'm sure I'm going to find another one 180 degrees, or maybe, maybe that is actually visible there. I can't really tell. Uh, but we're going to have to get in there. Looks like some long extension, some swivels, a deep well socket. Probably what we need to get that out of there. Okay, this here is the plate that holds the steering column in. Um, there's a bolt that is permanently attached to it on this side. The other side, you can see there's a carriage bolt hole. Okay, so that bolt comes out. But once you loosen those two bolts from the inside, and it's good to have a helper to hold the carriage bolt into that slot here for you, because um, I had problems with it pushing out of it and then spinning. Uh, but the, the plate just slips underneath the steering column. Now, one important thing here, the, the lever, if I can get, get a picture of it, I'm going to pull these spark plugs out of the way. Spark plug wires. There's a lever back there that's for the The cable it holds that um the start only in park and neutral or the key I'm not sure which at this point but that lever has to be in the up position because there is a cut out in the firewall that right here that allows that to go through for you to pull the steering column out. If it's not in the up position you'll be fighting against that and never get it out. Here's a little tip that I used when I was under there. I had to use a long extension and a universal joint to um, get it up under there. And a lot of times what happens with universal joints is they're kind of floppy. So what I did is wrapped it in tape to give it some rigidity because without the tape that thing just flops down like that and it's hard to keep it on the bolt. But with the tape it keeps it more rigid, makes it easier to keep it on the bolt. Now, I just grabbed masking tape because it was handy but black electrical tape is the best thing to use for it because it it's, stretches a little bit and it's uh, sturdy it doesn't rip like the masking tape. Now we're going to go under the steering column and get ready to remove this thing. Looks like there are three Phillips screws holding the cover plate on here so they're gonna have to go one was already loose so somebody's done me a favor Two were actually almost off. Okay. What we have under here is the control that allows you to raise the headlights uh, kind of manually if the headlight switch is defective. So I am going to take that off as well. 
and there are two bolts holding the steering column up. Uh, once we drop those, this air conditioning vent may have to go. Looks like it's already been cracked by somebody. Uh, and then there will be some wires attached to the steering column that go to the turn signal switch up there so those will have to come out um, I don't know if I remember to mention that the screws that were underneath at the firewall or the nuts were half inch so gonna have to put the camera down and take this off because I need both my hands to handle this steering column Okay, I was able to grab those vacuum lines, little twist and turn, they pulled right out. This is the headlight override switch. There's a little Phillips head screw that's screwed into the bracket. And then the thing you want to know is there's a tab here at the top that you twist and free the tab from the bracket and it pulls right out. Tab in. Twist it out. Comes right out. Another thing on the air conditioning vent it, it was in in this orientation this is the vent in the, the car. This is the one over by the firewall. Right next to the reset for the uh, trip meter, there's a little bracket. And this was finger tight, but it looks like it's probably a quarter inch screw held it on. Once I took that screw out, I was able to shift it over, take it off of this end, drop it down, push it back, out it came. Piece of cake. I double checked and this this is actually a 5 16 holding the uh, air conditioning vent in. I'm going to go take the steering column out now. It's 9 16 uh, bolts that are holding it in. Uh, looks like uh, there's going to be uh, some wiggling that's going to need to happen to get it past the brake pedal. So I'll try to set up the camera on one side of the car and uh, we'll see how difficult it is. I've already taken one of the bolts out, so I only have one to go. And then the steering column will be free except for the electrical connector, which I can't see from the bottom, so hopefully it will when the steering column drops down, I'll be able to take it off. Appears to be stuck at the wall. And that was just the telescoping part coming out. I'm gonna have to go take a look under the firewall. Okay, after a lot of persuading, the uh, rag joint finally allowed me to separate it. And now I've got the steering column laid down on the seat. And we're going to address the wiring. 
There's a condenser over here. It's got a quick connect that we're going to disconnect. We're going to pull these plugs off of the ignition switch. And I'm making a note that the pink, large pink wire is closest to the front are closest to the driver and at the top so that when we put them back in and I'm not sure if this is one or two um, connectors so if there are two the second one has a brown wire closest to the driver on the top so when we put them back together we'll know how they go and then these wires here go into another connector behind there and once I get these off I think I'm going to have a little bit more room to work with that so that's the next thing to take off okay turns out there are two connectors here there's a black one and a white one though I was looking at two different ones um, the trick to getting these out is on the back side of them and you can't see it from the top is there's a little tab that you push on that one. The black one, they decided to make it really difficult and they've got two tabs that need to be pushed, one on each side. So you know, wiggle your fingers in there, press those guys and then push them and they come off. Okay, getting those off allowed me to pull this connector out and the trick to this one it's hard to see whenever you're looking at it but there's a tab on this side of the connector that you have to get a screwdriver behind to pull it out uh, once you get that released it comes out pretty easy but it was hard to see behind this connector because of all the wires but I have to go down this way and you can see it there you can slip a screwdriver right down behind it and then pull them out okay just to keep track of things while I'm here there's a I don't know if you can see them on the label but the all these wires on this side of the connector have letters on them and the, the side that has P, which is a black and white wire, going into it goes to the white wire, which I just noticed here. These also have P's, or letters to identify them, so the P is on the white wire. And the other thing that's going to help you out is you probably can't get them back together without this and the correct position, at least not properly together. So that's that, and it looks like that is all I have to get the steering column out. So I did, I did uh, take the connector for this condenser off. I didn't want to take the ignition switch off the column because I didn't want to run into problems with realigning it but you may want to do that okay a couple things here uh, since I was working by myself when I went out front to work on the rag joint area the weight of the column came down on these two screw in points for the little trim piece that goes up so now I'm gonna have to pull the dash pad off which won't be hard since the um, steering column is out there's just a few bolts a few screws really two there a couple over on this side feels like two and one up in the center here and that will come down but I'll have to take that off now to fix that um, the other point which was 
quite a bit of my problem in getting the thing out was with this piece from the rag joint still on the column it was interfering with the booster and making it hard to move the steering column uh, in order to get it out so do yourself a favor and get that off before you try to pull it out uh, makes the job much easier probably have to loosen it to give yourself the clearance to do it because you need a good inch to slide it off but once you've got that and you get that off uh, you know, a little bit of maneuvering and it comes out it's harder than I was led to believe from what I've seen on some of the Corvette forums but uh, it's it's out now <laughs>